Hello Wards Gamers, I'm here today with a Flames of War painting tutorial, and today I'm going to be doing some Flames of War infantry. Uh, I'm going to cover a few more things other than just the paint job in here, because I think it's a good idea to cover that, and so you don't have to, have to ask me as many questions later. Also because I think a lot of people do wonder these things when you look at tutorials, and yeah. I'm going to cover it. Anyways, uh, these are all uh, guys for a um, client of mine. Uh, the uh, actual name of these guys are uh, Geburtsjäger, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, they're uh, mountain infantry for, German for Germany, and they have like green pants with like khaki jackets and stuff like that, like a gray green pants with khaki jackets and stuff like that. But um, a couple things I wanted to cover before we get into the actual painting is, uh, first of all, uh, massive priming for a lot of especially really, really small guys like this. Uh, it's because it's even if they're metal like these ones are, when you get into this size, it gets really, really difficult to prime them. Because priming them individually with like an airbrush can take forever, and priming them uh, in, in mass like I did is difficult unless you know a few tricks because they'll fly around when you try to hit them with a spray can. Um, so what I did here is that I just took a st strip of cardboard, and instead of having to waste the money on double-sided tape, this is actually just painter's tape, that blue tape you can get pretty much any hardware store. I put it upside down, and I stapled it to the cardboard, and it makes a just a perfect surface to stick these guys to, because they've got enough for them to hold on there when you prime them, and it, they're not too difficult to pull off either. You see, it's just blue painter's tape underneath. And, you see, I have at least 85 guys here, plus a few other things, as I got gutting placements and uh, radios and stuff like that, and there's actually more to this project, but this is all just the small stuff. And, and see, I just took me, I just did, I just put these together, and I, as I cleaned up the models, I just stuck them to the tape. Didn't take me any extra time to do that than it normally would. And instead of having to prime them individually, which uh, this many models can take upwards to an hour, an hour and a half, if you're trying to do them all individually, I got this priming done in like two minutes. So I have them uh, primed in uh, army painter uniform gray. Uh, I just did that because it's a nice mid-tone, and since it's going to be gray-greens anyways, uh, the gray underneath showing through a little bit won't be too much of a problem. Uh, you can prime in white, black, or you can prime in a green or gray, if, or you know, gray, whatever, whatever uh, suits your needs. The primer is just basically give us a place to put the paint on anyways. And um, as far as how I'm going to hold them onto... Uh, painting. Uh, there's there's many different methods for holding them. I mean, you can just put them on bases if they have them. These guys don't have any. Uh, you could even paint them on this uh, car, uh, holder like this. Especially with how, how big they are. This really, really small model size. It's not too much of an issue to get into the details like this, but uh, since I'm only going, since for the tutorial purpose, I'm only showing you really painting one guy. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of sticking a pin in them or anything like that, all I have here really is just a chapstick with some blue poster tack at the end of it. And you just take the guy off and you can stick him right on there and it's a perfect method of holding on to the guy for painting. Oh, that's just, just wonderful. Anyways, um, this is just a live recorded part that I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to do a voiceover for the rest of the painting tutorial, and I hope you enjoy. Alright, here's a list of the paints that I used for this project. Just go ahead and if you want, pause the video and write them down, and we'll be moving on to the actual painting in just a moment. Alright, here we are. We're going to be painting this guy right here today. Uh, the first paint I am using is called, is a uh, Vallejo model color German dark green, and I'm just going to be painting that uh, on his pants and his hat here. 
Uh, please forgive me for the focus and being out of frame a little bit and not being centered and all that. I'm, I'm still getting used to trying to do all the uh, tutorial stuff. It's it's very odd, very early. I'm gonna get hopefully get better at it in the near future. Anyways, um, I'm diluting this with just a little bit of water. I don't want to get too thin. Uh, especially even though these are really small models, if I get too thin, it's just going to start going everywhere, and these models don't have enough detail where that matters, where, you know, you're going to obscure too much if your paint is decently thick. So I just base coated with a very, very slightly thinned version of this color. Uh, most everything I, I use, I thin slightly, if not quite a bit, depending on what, how level of painting I'm trying to do. Fortunately for this type of project, um, specifically this, it doesn't require too much effort in order to uh, achieve a decent looking tabletop standard. And what I'm doing here is just using uh, appropriate colors and uh, high contrast to achieve a great, a good tabletop standard. They're going to look very, very nice all lined up next to each other. Anyways, soon I'm going to uh, have finished this color, and I'll move on to the next. In which case, I'm just base coating. I, I, I believe I just base coated everything before doing highlights. That way everything had a chance to dry. Because since it's so small, you don't want to um, jump directly into highlighting. You could run into the problems of the paint still being wet. I did this all in one take. As you can see, I, said, I, I had problems getting center of the frame. Can't see what I'm doing at the moment. I believe I am just laying... Um... Oh, no, I'm putting the green on the hat. Okay. It's uh, very different working with a camera directly in front of your face, trying to hold your hands uh, directly underneath it so that you can see everything you're doing. I'm also going to have to work out on, um, work with light filtering. I'm going to have to start filtering my desktop lamp, because I, I can see quite clearly, like, the way the light's hitting the ground there. I'll see, I'm back in frame, hooray! Alright, just touching up any spots that look like they have any little, any gray showing through. Fortunately, this particular color is rather opaque, so I don't have to worry about too much of that. I'm just hitting any areas that it looks like it might have. <laughs> Anyway, I'm moving on to my next color here. Uh, this is Vallejo Game Color Earth. And the reason why I'm using Earth instead of Khaki or anything like that is because this is going to be the shade color and not the base color. And this is very much... I, I played around with a few different colors, actually. Uh, I played around with Dark Sand. I also played around with starting with Khaki and trying to wash. Uh, on some test models beforehand, but I thought I, I thought this came out with the best looking results, and it matched most closely to what I was seeing on the Flames of War website for their paint scheme. And I'm just hitting all this entire overcoat with this color. Uh, the, the overcoat is the only part of him that gets this color. Again, slightly thin. Do a nice strong base coat. Uh, it went on all, I think it went on completely in one, yeah, one layer. <laughs> Sorry, I was recording the actual audio for this a couple days after I did the paint job, so. Where I actually, uh, my memory is not absolutely perfect on what I did. The way I'm doing this, I am being making sure to be careful that I'm not getting any paint on the other areas because I don't want to go back and repaint them. That would be a pain. By the 
Okay, another thing to keep in mind while you're doing this, uh, paints do generally tend to dry darker than the way they look when they're wet. So, just keep that in mind while you're painting these models. That whenever you go on here with whatever color, that you gotta make sure that you adjust for what's going to be the actual color when it's dry. Another way of being able to tell what the color that is dry is, is um, taking a little bit of paint, putting it on a palette, and then putting it on the top of your lid, of your paint pot or paint lid, just to show you what the dry color looks like. Yeah, I've I've seen people make mis the mistake of taking out a color what they think will be the appropriate next appropriate color or whatever color they want, and then once it dries, it doesn't look like the way they wanted it to look. And this is just a good way of avoiding it is just knowing what the color is going to look like after it dries. And then actually on this model, you can already see the areas that are dry are darker than the areas I'm putting on fresh. And fortunately for us, that's just illustrates what I'm talking about. Right, I'm just making sure I gotten everything, gotten all the little, little details covered. This guy had missed his, uh, his right armpit for, his, uh, for a moment. I went back and got it. But make sure, when you're, whenever you're painting, uh, you make sure you've gotten everywhere you needed to get in one step before moving on to the next one. Because if you don't, you're going to have to go back later and put new fresh paint down. and It could slow you down. Especially when you're trying to speed paint, it's not a good thing. Okay, let's see what I'm gonna do next. Sorry for the in between. Uh, it's that I just did this all in one take, but uh, so I'm just cleaning out my brush and stuff. Ah, all right. Here I am doing his little uh, leggings. There, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but I am using a pan uh, Vallejo pan uh, Vallejo. Ugh. Vallejo Panzer Aces Highlight USMC uh, TK uh, Tracker. I said I don't know the TKCR period P. Um, it's a it's a kind of a grayish green color, a little bit on the bright side. But um, you can also use Vallejo model color gray green. It'll pretty much achieve the same effect. It looks almost exactly the same from what I know. But I. I, uh, especially for uh, Flames of War minis or anything that's realistic looking, or meant to be more like historical realistic looking, I tend to try to use Panzer Acer, uh, Panzer Aces colors just because they are very, very good. There's a lot of really good muted colors in that range for things like um, greens and stuff. Alright, what I'm doing now is I'm using Panzer Aces leather belt to paint the shoes. Uh, if he had uh, any belts or satchels or anything like that on him, I would paint those as well. With this color. On this particular model, it's just the shoes. I realize I picked a model that didn't have a gun or anything, anything special on him. But the techniques that I'm using and the actual colors I'm using wouldn't change too much if I did. So didn't really matter in the long run. Uh, if he had a gun, I, I would have just used either like chocolate brown or Valle uh, Vallejo model color chocolate brown or Vallejo game color um, charred brown as the base for it and I would have highlighted it with like beast, beast steel brown, BC brown, whatever it's called. <laughs> a little bit. Then the gun barrel with the same color I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the same color on this guy, so we'll, I'll cover that when we get to it. All right. Now this color, even though you can't see him very well, is actually a mixture of Panzer Ace's Shadow Flesh and Flesh Base. Um, it's about one to one mix. Uh, the reason why I'm not doing the Shadow Flush base on its own is I'm not a huge fan of the con I'm not a huge fan of the really really stark contrast. The actual values between the 
Shadow Flesh and the Flesh Base and the Flesh Highlight are actually really, really great. So I try to go in with um, mixtures with the Flesh Base in it because I think it looks awkward otherwise. If you want to know for more contrast, you can do a 2 to 1 uh, Shadow Flesh to Flesh Base color if you want to. That just helps turn up the contrast. You can even just use straight shadow flesh. It's a, it's personal preference. Uh, so you can't really see the hair on this guy because of his cap. I don't go back and do any hair color. I just hit his neck with this color as well. And just cover all his skin. It's the same on every guy, basically. I know I keep going distances away from the camera, but I can only get the camera down so far without me being not be able to actually see what I was doing. So, oh, but that means my hands had to be off the, um, off my workspace, and that wasn't great, because if my hands weren't on the workspace, my hands aren't as steady, and working with not very steady hands, it's not fun. If you could do that, yeah, that's good. Now you see here, I went back and I saw that an area that I thought was actually flesh was the um, earth color, so I had to go back and fix that. See what I said about making sure you've hit everywhere before moving on? And then I had to go back and finish up the flesh. <laughs> I said, I didn't do as high a contrast on his flesh as you'll see. You can always do a higher contrast. It's not a bad thing. Alright. Now I went back here, and I went back with straight, um, Panzer Ace's Aquacra Core Tank Crew color. Uh, it's a darker gray-green color. It's, it's really nice. And I'm using it as the highlight for the pants. You can even go back and do a further highlight if you wish. Uh, I am just doing this color for the tabletop standard it actually once it's done to the eye it looks really nicely blended and I didn't have to put really any effort into blending it whatsoever it's most areas are just kind of an overbrush you make sure you hit the higher areas the areas the light would definitely hit and it looks really nice when it's done if you uh, get into any of the crevices and you uh, don't want it there, you can always go back with the base or with the uh, shadow color and reapply it. I may have, I don't remember. We'll see. I know I did on the jagged to uh, put some shadow back into certain areas. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a huge history buff, so I don't know what a ton about these guys. I said, I know they're mountain troops. Uh, what I do know, I basically learned from my client. You know, I have no problem doing research. At least a little bit of research in order to do these guys appropriately. I at least did enough to get a good idea what these colors were. Or what colors I've been using. It's like, I don't have the largest range of paints. I have like maybe a third of the model color range. I have most of Hands Races and I have like all of the game color range. But yeah, that's still minuscule to what a lot of people or a lot of pro painters have nowadays. But you know, I'm one person I would just in the past year started trying to do this. Um I mean, I had the money to buy a bunch of paints and stuff, so I was fortunate enough for that. Um, you see what I'm doing with the hat? I'm just kind of overbrushing, so that way I don't get into the crevice in the hat there and leave it dark. And that way, way I also hit the rim and the top front of the hat. Alright, now I'm going back and I'm highlighting the overcoat with Vallejo Game Color Cat. And this color looks almost exactly like the color that um, the core you the, uh, the the jackets actually were. So this would technically be a base color. But as far 
far as I could tell, even on the uh, product pages, these weren't highlighted at past at this point. This would look almost like exactly how they did it. So if that's their display models, I'm not too far off. Plus with, you know, these size, the 15mm size models, there's only so much work you can put into them before it's not worth the time to do it. Especially if you're going to plan on playing with them. I could not imagine spending too much time putting into painting competition level of these. Now you saw there I had some frayed, um... Like my, uh, bristles were frayed. It was just because I got to roll my brush as I pulled up the paint. Make sure to do that. It would help keep the point on your bristle. It help keep help your, uh, brush last longer. And this is also a thin paint out of the pot. So this one actually does, in most places, require a couple layers. And it's probably why I get a bit more blend, but I get a really decent looking blend on this. Because this is a more transparent color, the under color shines through a, bit, a little bit better. So having to do additional layers helps create more of a blend. Darn it, I went out of frame again. I'll get better at this, I promise. I'm not even wiping off too much paint with uh, this color. Because it's relatively controlled. It's not. This one's not even thin at all. I did not thin this paint at all because of uh, how, how, ready, how runny and transparent it is. But I'll be honest, I actually don't like working as much with the transparent or with the more uh, liquidy transparent paints. And the main reason for that is because it's easier to thin down paints than to work with a paint that's already thinned down and have to worry about it running into fine details and stuff. And I know there are a lot of painters out there, like the uh, like French guy and Bisto, I think it's French guy and Bisto more likes to really thin down paint. Personal preference of mine, I'd rather have to thin down my paint myself. It gives me more control. It gives me less that I have to concern myself with. Anyways, uh, I'm hitting most areas on this. I'm skipping most of his underarm. Uh, I'm getting almost everywhere. I'm leaving the uh, earth color in the recesses of the jacket. And that is to just give it a uh, shade, give it the shading and the outline in certain areas to give it, uh, to make the detail pop. Because this is all this is doing is playing with contrast. And tabletop standard for a 15 millimeter is pure, is almost pure contrast instead of um, blending. Because trust me, if you're going to try to blend this a lot, you're going to drive yourself mad painting tons and tons of these guys. And this is just me painting one, one guy. <laughs> You can see how long this takes me, and it would have probably gone faster if I had not been recording myself. In fact, I always find myself having worked faster if I didn't record myself. Uh, fortunately, actually, this step probably took me longer than most any step in this process, just because the khaki is more transparent. So I'm going back and hitting areas that I don't like how dark it is. I want to bring it back up uh, more up to the more khaki color. Especially on uh, the very uh, upper areas that are going to be clearly hit by the light. Since this guy's kind of hunched over a little bit, the back of the jacket is definitely a good area to hit. Uh, near the bottom, because it goes out, the top of the arms. We're on our way to a uh, tabletop standard German mountain trooper. All right, now this is pure flesh base, and just kind of overbrushing the face and hands to pick out what details there are, because these aren't not the most extremely detailed 
models out there, even for this scale. And like, if you look at, um, which I will be doing in the future, uh, the like Shaltari Shal Shal tribes, uh, drop zone commander models. Their their infantry are actually really highly detailed. So, um, yeah. As I said, they look better than this. And I said, I want to paint those. I'm so excited. I, I got those models a little while ago. Anyway, it's just making sure you get all the areas, leaving a little bit of that, make the darker color in the recesses. The reason I'm rolling it around is I'm looking at it, making sure that I hit everywhere. Uh, also checking to see if it's dry enough to go to the next color. And the next color that I'm doing is actually a one-to-one -one mix of the Panzer Aces Flesh Base and Panzer Aces um, Highlights Flesh. And as you can see, it actually does have a nice dark, it has a really nice bright flesh tone to it. Again, I did the mix because, frankly, I think the um, tones are so, so different. There's no way on a model this size to go, this size to go from the flesh, shadow flesh, all the way up to the pure flesh highlight without it looking weird or a cartoony. And this is supposed to be serious World War II models, and that's supposed to be cartoony. As so I'm overbrushing, leaving some of the former love some of the last color in there as I do this try to be careful not to get anywhere else wishing my camera stayed in focus I'm using a webcam partly because it's cheap partly because it's HD and partly because for most things it does stay in focus it's Partly because I have this so close and it's just a small figure that it's having such problems. Oh, by the way, if you need to wipe off paint and you don't have something to wipe it off on really close to you, use your fingernail. I did. You can see it right on my thumbnail. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm... <laughs> a squeaky voice. I'm taking um, German Black from Hands Races and I'm hitting the buttons on its jacket just to give them a metallic feel. On um, Flames of War figures, for most like, dark metals, I just use German black. And, if I, and that's what I would use for like gun barrels, for machine guns or pistols or anything, if I needed to do metallic. Uh, if you want to make it more metallic, you can add, it'll take, like, take it like, um, just a standard number two pencil and rub it on that area afterwards. And it gives you a nice, realistic looking shine. And what I'm doing now is going back with some of the um, earth color thinned down slightly and just hitting the areas that I think I uh, went too far in with the khaki and just adding back in some shadow. Uh, I initially wasn't going to do this, but then I looked over the figure and said, you know, I, it's, it's, it's not that great. There's some areas that, that, that I want the shadows to, to go back in. I like it there. These little folds in the jacket. They're very, they're very slight folds, but they're they're prominent enough where I wanted the color to pop out. And right there on the neck. Again, I'm out of frame. But almost done. Almost done. Sometimes I'm a perfectionist when I do these sort of things. I, 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 I might overwork myself to get a really, really nice looking figure. Anyways, uh, the figure is actually done now. All I need to do is hit it with a um, some sort of varnish. Dull, I actually use Tester's Dull Coat. And you should be done with that model. I mean, of course, base it if you got a base for it or something like that, but... Anyways, uh, thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that I can make more for you in the future. Please give me some feedback, comment, like, subscribe, whatever heck you want to do. 
Uh, definitely comment because I would love to get feedback and some suggestions and requests and all that stuff. I love it. I would love to give you guys what you want, uh, especially specifically Marine chapters because I have a bunch of really like bad Space Marines. So if you want to ask for me to paint some Marine chapters, go ahead and comment below with that. And happy Warb Gaming. Happy Warb Gaming. Happy Warb Gaming. Happy 